Okay, so uh, let's let us um, introduce ourselves uh, here um, as members of the Enrich team. And in fact, we're all here in Cambridge this afternoon, which is a little bit unusual for these times. So my name is Liz Woodham. Uh, I'm the primary coordinator of Enrich, and I'm joined by Charlie Gildsdale, who is the secondary coordinator, and Ems Lord, who is our director. Um, we are extremely grateful to Trinity College here in Cambridge for funding these webinars, which means that they're free to you. Um, and we will be garnering your feedback a little bit later at the end of the session. The purpose of this afternoon is to have a go at uh, some of the tasks in the latest primary feature. Um, we hope that we'll spend the afternoon doing some maths together, but also talking about how the tasks could be used in the classroom uh, and um, why they are so good at encouraging children to think mathematically and develop their problem solving skills. So without further ado, I am going to share my screen again, but this time I'm going to pop up the Enrich website. Um, I'm hoping that you are able to see this. Um, Charlie, can you nod at me uh, and let me know that you can see the browser? Thank you very okay. much. <clears throat> um, so this is the homepage of Enrich and many of you here um, may well be familiar with it. Uh, as I said, we're going to concentrate on the primary resources this afternoon. So I'm going to click here in the um, menu at the top, which is a primary teacher homepage. And that takes us to all things primary. Um, I would really recommend that you, you, you bookmark this page or you, you, you keep this in your favorites. This afternoon, we're going to look at the tasks in our latest feature, which you can access here. Now, you may have participated in our last webinar, and if so, you'll notice that um, the theme of today's webinar is very similar. We're focusing on proof through words again, um, this time in a geometrical context. So our accompanying article, which you may like to read if you haven't done so already, outlines three um, essential features of proof in the primary classroom. So the first one of these is building strong foundations. And by that, um, for example, we might need to be very clear about particular definitions. Leading on from the uh, strong foundations, we've got this idea of encouraging children to build up this watertight chain of reasoning. So give them giving them opportunities to reason mathematically. And the third feature of, of the proof is, is a focus on the representation. How do we communicate proof? And I guess traditionally we might associate proof with algebra. But the point of the tasks today, and indeed the ones that we looked at in the webinar last time, is that you don't need to be fluent with algebra in order to begin um, to prove in mathematics. And that's what I hope we will convince you of today if you are not already convinced. So Charlie and I are gonna have a little bit of a conversation about the tasks. Uh, we'll be um, encouraging you to participate in the maths using the chat. Uh, we'll be talking out loud a bit as we do a little bit of solving. Um, please do pop in the chat any questions that you have at any time as well, and we'll do our best to address those. Um, just um, to kind of give a bit of background, as I mentioned, Charlie is the secondary coordinator at Enrich. So Charlie is not as familiar with these problems as I am. So, which is really useful in many ways because it allows us to unpick together what they're about. Charlie, is there anything you'd like to say before we kick off? No, no, I'm just looking forward to seeing these new problems. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to start uh, now you can appreciate that we are afraid we haven't got time to look at all the problems in detail. So we've selected a few that we'll have a go at today and I will very quickly summarize the remaining ones near the end. We're going to start off with the task which is called break it up. I'm deliberately not clicking on the problem because I'd like to introduce it to you actually using the visualizer rather than looking at the web page to start with. So I'm going to stop sharing the web page and instead I'm hoping I'm going to be able to share my visualizer there we go now Charlie would you just um nod at me if you can see a row of cubes brilliant so this task is called break it up we're starting with as you can see we've got seven cubes um and they're all different colors and it and it's important that they're all different colors um as the name suggests 
we're going to have a go at breaking up this stick of cubes, if you like, I'm going to call it stick. Um, we're going to break it into two pieces. So for example, I might break it like that, so that I've got a shorter stick of three and, um, and a stick of four, one more. That's one way of breaking it into two pieces. I could alternatively break it like that. So I've got a stick of one and a stick of six. I wonder how many ways there are of breaking my seven cubes into two pieces. I wonder whether you could um, contribute some ideas on the chat. You may like to put up some individual solutions and I'll leave it totally up to you about how you record those on the chat. Um, just do it in a way that seems straightforward and easy for you. So can you think of some other solutions? We're breaking it into two pieces. Um, how many are there going to be all together? How many different ways of doing it? So just a couple of minutes to have a think. Thank you for your contribution so far. I can see that you're very thoughtful mathematicians. Some of you are asking questions, which is really important. And um, I'm glad you feel able to. Um, in, in answer to, can we, can we change, or oh, now I'm going to, uh, before I try to paraphrase, I'm going to find the exact wording. Can we rearrange the cubes, somebody has asked. Um, the, the seven cubes are fixed in that order on the stick. I hope that helps. Um, some people are starting to talk about ways of repeating. Uh, Mrs. Knight has asked, do you have to have two sticks? Yes. At the moment, we're focusing on breaking that seven stick into two smaller sticks. Um, Charlie, if, if I was going to ask you to how you might approach this task, what, what, what would you do? Or what, what, well, if we're thinking about ourselves in the classroom, it's interesting, isn't it, that I asked, I asked our participants here about, can they think of some other ways of doing it and how many there might be? And perhaps I was too hasty. Perhaps I shouldn't have asked the how many yet. And I should have just asked, offer some more examples. Um, how, how will we approach this together, Charlie? If I've understood what you're asking, <laughs> um, I think, um, I think there are six different ways um, <clears throat> because I'm thinking, well, I can have the pink one on its own and then the rest, or the pink and the blue together, so the first two together and then the rest. That's two ways so far. Yes, and then or I can have the first three cubes together, the pink, the blue and the yellow, and then the rest. <clears throat> and I can keep going like this, so either the first or the first two, or the first three, or the first four, all the way up to the first six. Because you said that I had to partition it into two. So <clears throat> the longest stick I can have on the left-hand side is six long. So I've gone from one to six, and I can do all the ones in between. So that's how I figured out there must, that there are six, if I've understood um the rules correctly thank you charlie yeah th those were certainly what i was trying to communicate as the rules and um i'm ap i apologize if i didn't communicate it um <laughs> quite clearly enough and thank you for those of you who've, who've asked for clarification um um as some people i can see that uh, the michael there has started to record that using a, using addition 
um, number sentences. Um, but, but that's only one way of recording. Interestingly, many of you didn't record individual solutions. You, you offered straight away the total number. Um, so in the classroom, of course, children will record in all sorts of different ways. And it may be that if you're able to give them sticks of cubes, they will, they will be able to make them and find their own ways, ways of recording. In order to gather solutions together and meaningfully talk, you, you may decide to, to, to offer a, a way of recording that we're all going to use so we can talk about it easily. But that's not necessarily, that's not necessary um, all the time. Thank you, Charlie. So um, because, the, because the cubes are all colored differently, I, I agree, Charlie, that this, this six and this one is, is different in this case, in the, in the context of this problem to one, and a six because of the colors. And that might seem for some children a little bit counterintuitive to start with. And many children like you may notice that and question it. So it's important to you know, talk that through. Right, so Charlie, what would happen then, do we think, if um, we added another cube and we have now eight cubes? So there's, a, there's um, something to think about on the chat eight cubes now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to break them into two pieces. How many different ways can I do that? What do you think? If you could post, um, post your thoughts, thank you. Ah, good question. Can we show zero plus seven? Shilpa has asked. Now Shilpa, if we were thinking about this purely numerically um, in an abstract, numerical way, then we might want to include zero plus seven. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about a length of cubes, a stick of cubes, and I'm saying we've got to have two sticks. So because we've got to have two sticks, I think we can't include zero as one of our sticks. I hope that makes sense. And I hope you think I'm being reasonable in, in my, um, my assumption. So Charlie, um, we've got some solutions, seven ways. Um, oh, um, uh, uh, oh, Miss Owen is talking about that being not. Uh, thank you, Miss Owen. Miss Owen has written it out for me very concisely. Absolutely right. That's why we're going to disregard the zero. Um, so I think we're happy. Charlie, would you agree? Seven ways? Yes. Um, <clears throat> add, uh, yes, adding one cube has added one more possibility. That's, yeah, one mm. cube has added one more possibility, the possibility of the seven and the one. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so I'd like you now to think about just six cubes. Let's quickly think about six cubes. A quick prediction. How many ways of breaking our stick into two sticks will there be for six cubes? <clears throat> Several people very quickly suggesting five. Um, what is your conjecture here then? I wonder whether somebody could articulate on the chat what their conjecture is. And by conjecture, I am meaning what is my, I, I'm putting forward a, um, a, a theory, I'm offering a suggestion, but I'm go, I know I'm going to be able to work through the mathematics and know whether my conjecture is true or not true. Slightly different to a, a scientific hypothesis, but we won't muddy the water about that now. Can I just <laughs> check, Liz, you're asking for a conjecture about the number of ways of splitting it for different number of cubes. Sorry, that's exactly what I'm asking, Charlie, but it wasn't clear from my question that I was talking about a general case, was it? You're absolutely right, yeah, yes. <clears throat> I can see that you participate. Those of you who have posted, I think, are, are communicating your conjecture in different ways, which is rather nice. Um, yes, we are assuming that the colours are all different. Really good question. We're assuming that the colours are different, are the cubes. <clears throat> So 
so we've got a mixture of, of, of um, conjectures here. Uh, sorry, a mixture of ways of communicating the conjecture. I think um, from what I've read, you are um, you have got similar conjectures. Some people are phrasing it in a way that there'll be um, one fewer than the total number of cubes. A couple of you, even though we were talking earlier about the fact that algebra isn't necessary, are expressing your ideas in an algebraic way. Um, and that's great, you're feeling confident to do that. So you're saying the number of ways is x minus one or n minus one, and you're making sure that you tell us what x or n means. So x or n is the total number of cubes in our, in our, in our stick. Um, now, <clears throat> Charlie, I know um, one of the things that we like to say at Enrich is that we're, you know, we're nurturing young mathematicians. And I think I'm right in saying that generally speaking, mathematicians aren't happy that we can find a few examples that fit our conjecture. We're keen as, as mathematicians to form an argument, a mathematically convincing argument, so that we know that our conjecture, in this case, will always be true. Is there anything you'd like to add to that, Charlie, about, about that kind of, that's what mathematicians might strive for? Well, in, in terms of being able to justify why the number yeah. would be one less than the number of cubes. Mm, exactly, exactly. I um, wonder, is that, is that possible in this case? Can we... And we've noticed the pattern, we've, we've offered our conjecture. I guess what we could do is we could test another number of cubes, but can we get a sense for why this is the case? Um, well, I hope perhaps that my original explanation might give a clue to this. So I'm, I, was, I was not emphasizing that the whole lot added up to seven. I wasn't talking about two on the left and five on the right or three. On, I was sort of saying two on the left and the rest on the right or three on the left and the rest on. So if I've got, so, okay. So, so one possibility is I, I, I use what Tim Rowland talks about as a generic example. So let's, exam, let's imagine, how would I explain what's gonna happen when there are a hundred cubes? Yeah. On the left, I can have one and then the rest on the right, or two on the left and the rest on the right, or three. And I can keep going. Yeah. And the largest I can have on the left is 99, because I always have to leave at least mm -hmm. one on the right. And so because the smallest I can leave on the right is one, I'm going to be able to do everything from one to 99. And it, to me, that captures the generality of it all. If I can explain the hundred, I don't need to use the n's and the algebra and all that. <clears throat> it, I, I can say it in words, and I don't think that using algebra involves more sophisticated thinking. It just involves a different way of articulate, a different language, a different way of expressing. But what I want the students to do is to appreciate the generality that they can, by looking at it in this way, be convinced that if you had a hundred cubes, you could go all the way from one on the left to 99 on the left and all the ones in between. And that therefore there were 99 combinations. Mm -hmm. I'm not too bothered at this stage, whether they can write N's and N minus ones. And unfortunately sometimes it's, it's the algebraic notation that puts people off algebra. Absolutely. Whereas I want them, um, the algebraic thinking is noticing the generality and that feels much more important. Thank you. That, <laughs> Sorry, that was a very long-winded answer. No, but it, um, I, I hope those of you participating will agree with me and say, I think that, that, was, that was extremely articulate and I think has captured exactly the essence of what we're trying to do here. And I think um, that, that understanding without, it, it, yeah, the, the, the understanding is the key here. And I think having that understanding of those moments where you're able to articulate generality like that, no matter what the mathematics is you're working on, we're only working on numbers one to seven at the, you know, in this first example, um, is one of the ways I think we can get children really excited about the power of mathematics. 
that idea that I could give you any number of cubes and you would be able to work out straight away how many ways I could split it, um, split the stick into two. How powerful is that? Thank you, Charlie. If you have any other comments about that um, task, do pop them into the chat. Um, be just before we leave it and have a look at another task, I do want to come back to um, the point that somebody made a few moments ago on the chat about um, how would this change if our cubes were all the same color? So that's a, that's a nice thing that you may want to explore. Um, it, it, it changes, obviously, it, it changes the numbers, it changes the patterns, it will, it will, but that could be something you could go on to. And how does what you get in that case relate to what we have got in this case to our generality here? How do they relate and why? And what's yeah and this is slightly more challenging yeah but we often talk about low threshold high ceiling tasks at yeah. enrich yeah and so what you've done so far is, is the low threshold task but um some students would find it interesting and it's highly surprising because there is one rule if the number of cubes is even and there's a different rule if the number of cubes is odd and students may not have come across this. So, so I mean, just to give a little bit away, just to give you a taste of what's happening, if there are six identically colored cubes, mm -hmm. then um, I think there are only three combinations that are possible. You can have one and five, two and four, three and three. Um, and, and, and because the colors are all the same, and we're going to treat two and four as the same as four and two. But if you have seven colors, mm -hmm. you also only have three combinations. So there is um, there's a need to look at what happens when there's an even number of cubes and when there's an odd number of cubes. Um, and um, yeah, it's slightly more challenging, but, um, but a, a nice follow up, it seems to me. Absolutely. And I like the fact that some of our participating teachers have, are already thinking about it. So that's good. Thank you, Charlie. That's really helpful. Um, so I think what we're going to do now uh, is just go back to, I'm going to stop sharing via the visualizer and go back to the web browser. Here we go. <clears throat> Can you see the enriched site again, Charlie, now? No. I can now. Oh, great. Just a little bit of delay. Great. Thank you. Um, so that task was break it up. Just to very, very quickly take you um, into the task itself. We've got images uh, to, to, instead of obviously using a visualizer, but I think in the classroom using a visualizer is rather nice. Um, and uh, what I wanted to draw your attention to is the fact that this is one of our live tasks, which means at the moment we are inviting solutions from children. Uh, all you'd need to do is click on the submit a solution link and you could upload photos of what your children are doing along with um, some, some narrative. You can do that on behalf of a group of children, on behalf of the whole class, or you may want to sometimes um, encourage individuals to um, submit solutions to us. The deadline for that is um, Monday the 21st of March. So because we're quite a short half term in the UK um, this time, I'm afraid you've only got a few weeks, um, but do share any of your children's solutions with us if you have a go at this in the classroom. Let's go back then to the feature. So here we are again at the, at the top level feature. Um, and so I've got here, just so that you know how I got to it, I got here by the primary teacher homepage. Let me go back again. And then on the right here, this link to the current feature, proof through words in, in the context of geometry. Okay, um, let's have a look at this task now. This one is, our, is called Counting Stick Conjectures. Now try not to be too distracted by everything on the screen at the moment. Um, you may well be familiar with a counting stick. Are you okay, Charlie, can you see this? Is that up? Oh, right. Um, you may well be familiar with a counting stick. You may have them in your school, in your classroom. Um, if I was introducing this task with children, what I would start off doing is perhaps 
having the counting stick up in front um, or showing them the, the photo if you don't have one available. And I'd ask, what do you see? What do you notice? Um, are there any questions you'd like to ask? Um, Charlie, what do, you, what do you notice or what do you see in terms of the, the image of the counting stick there? Just to put you on the spot. Um, equally spaced um, sections. Nice. Alternate colours. Yeah. Uh, yes, two colours repeating themselves. Um, yep. So, I don't know, if I was counting, starting from left to right, all the yellow ones would be even numbers and the blue ones would be odd numbers. Nice. Um, yeah, it, the equal spacing, I suppose, is the most... It leaps out, doesn't it? Yeah. That's really helpful. Thank you, Charlie. And, and of course, Charlie has come in straight away with pretty mathematical observations, which, you know, uh, may not be the case in your classroom, but it's important that we, you know, we acknowledge all the contributions at this stage. Children will need to get things off their chest. You know, oh, this, um, this looks like the pattern on my duvet cover. Could well be a response, which is totally valid. Um, and as I say, need, needs to be got out there before we can focus on the mathematics. So that's just um, to get us into the task. What I'd like you to think about now is rather than the image, rather than the photo, I should say, of the counting stick, can you focus your attention now on this sort of simple picture that we've made of the counting stick underneath? Um, I'm going to offer a question to you and I'm going to deliberately suggest that Charlie and I say nothing for a moment to let you wallow in the question for a bit. So my question is, in this picture of the counting stick, how many rectangles do you see? And um, just, just to sort of qualify, the rectangles could be different sizes. So if you feel able to post, to, you know, post your suggestion in the chat, please do, but you may just want to think about it. So just 30 seconds, how, how many rectangles? So apologies if you're still thinking, but I'm quite pleased to see that we don't seem to have a consensus. There are a number of different responses. We've got, um, I think somebody's posted 19, we'd have 24, 26, 27, we've got a 55. Hmm. And I, I sort of want to apologize in some ways because I deliberately wanted to throw you in at the deep end. Um, and leave you to flounder for a minute. Um, in the problem text itself, you'll see that we've got um, a suggestion. We, we, we've, we've, we've imagined a child called Zoya, and she's offering she's offering our, our, her thinking. So let me just share with you what she says. She says, I, I can see some small rectangles, which are either yellow or blue. I can also see some bigger rectangles made of two of the smaller ones and some that are even bigger. I tried to count all of the rectangles, but I got very confused. That may be how some of you are feeling and that is absolutely fine and partly my fault because I was kind of hoping you'd be confused. So what are we going to do here? I've, I've, I've offered you um, a task. You've, you've really, you've tried to engage with it. Thank you for doing that, but it's pretty unmanageable. What shall we do? Charlie, um, as a mathematician, what kind of strategies might we offer for coping with a question like this? Well, I sort of feel I've got three different answers to your question. Nice, tell me about those three different answers, Charlie. Okay, um, so one answer is that I can see 10 different rectangles. I can see a rectangle with a length of one, I can see a rectangle with a length of two, and a rectangle of length of three, all the way up to a rectangle of length of 10. <clears throat> Nice. So nice. there, I'm not, I'm ignoring the colours. Yeah. And I'm just saying, 
that um, that the rectangle is uh, I, they're all the same height, so I'm not worried about the height. I'm just wor yeah. worrying about the length. The length, nice. <clears throat> so, um, if this was a meter ruler, yes, then there's a rectangle of ten centimeters and one of twenty and one of thirty and one of forty all the way up. To, okay, so that gives me a solution of ten. Um, then I also have. I could justify my answer being 19. And I'm curious that at least one person- um, Did say 19. Fee yeah. um, wrote 19. Oh, and Mrs. Foster. So I'm not alone. Okay. And that was, okay. I have two possible rectangles of a length of, I, I'm going to assume it's a meter ruler. Yeah. So two different rectangles of length 10. One is blue and one is yellow. I've got two possible rectangles with a length of 20. One is blue yellow and the other one is yellow blue. And likewise for 30 centimeters and 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters, every time I can either start with blue or I can start with yellow. Nice. Um, so for almost all of them, there are two possibilities, except for the very last one, which yeah. is the whole, the whole meter. Length. I've only got one possibility. Right. It's got to start blue, it's got to finish yellow. So that gives me 19 possibilities. Mm. Um, but I also agree with Matt and Steve Robert, and I'm just looking here, Shibangi, if I, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, that one could think that there are 55 different rectangles. That's a lot of rectangles. <laughs> okay, so a few, a few people have said 55. And this is a little bit like <clears throat> the problem about how many squares are there on a chessboard. Uh-huh. Okay, so of length 10 centimeters, there are 10 different rectangles. I could yeah. pick, pick out yeah. 10 different portions. Yes. Should I shall I get up my sheets, Charlie, and put it under the visualizer? Would it be helpful to be to be scribbling, do you think? Yes, or I could do that. I've um I've printed out a you you told me Okay. No, yeah, whatever. But, but you, you, you do it and I'll talk. Okay, let me do it. Let me share, I'm going to stop sharing the, um, the web browser and instead I'll share the visualizer again. I've printed not out- sure, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, Liz. I hope I am anyway. <laughs> it's, it's okay, Charlie. I, I kind of forgotten what my question was anyway. So let me just move, I'm, I'm going to, sorry. I'm just gonna, you'll see my mouse lead. Just I'm gonna move our faces, delightful as they are, just over there. And then I can see, I know you can't really tell what I'm doing, but it, this makes sense for me. There we go. Okay, so we've got now, unfortunately, I don't have a colour printer. So I've printed some black and white representations of, uh, of our counting stick. So Charlie, talk me through. Well, um, yes, I, each of those rectangles could be considered to be different rectangles. Well, each of the 10 centimetre ones. Yeah. So I've got 10 possible short rectangles. So there's, that would be one, this is what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. Etc. Yes. And so there are going to be 10 there. Yeah. But I also have nine possible, I could choose nine different rectangles, which have got a length of 20 centimeters. Um, okay. So, like so if I take the first two rectangles together, that's one possible rectangle. Yes. But I could just shift by 10 centimeters and take the next two rectangles and then the next two rectangles and then the next. So if I'm asked for a portion of 20 centimeters, I could keep doing this um, and I'm gonna have nine possible alternatives. And the reason it's nine is that the very first one that you drew involved the first and the second, the next one's gonna be second and third, the next one's gonna be the third and fourth, the last one's gonna be the ninth and the 10th. And so I started with rectangle number one, on the left and the last combination is going to be rectangles nine and ten uh i hope that makes sense and so it's going to be the ninth possible combination 
It does make a lot of sense, Charlie. I'm wondering though, this, this is, it's, um, you are articulating it very clearly, but it is hard to keep track of these rectangles, even though you're doing a brilliant, brilliant job of being very systematic in the way you're approaching this. I wonder whether we might have a look at this from a slightly different angle and think about what would happen if we simplified our counting stick. Um, I think what I might do is move that one out of the way. Actually, what I could do is put it upside. No, 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 I'm gonna do that. What if I only had a, um, a counting stick? Mm, let me get my pen. What if I only had a counting stick that was two which was effectively, I like your analogy, let's call that 20 centimetres long. How many rectangles might there be now? So I guess we can see some that are length 10. Would you mind posting in the chat? How many rectangles would you see? Could we not count the whole stick as a rectangle? Yes, Jill, we could count the whole stick as a rectangle. A couple of people saying three, three. Yeah. Can you, I'm not sure I understand your question, Jill, oh. uh, Liz. So can you, can you help me understand what it is you don't understand or not? Would you oh, like me okay. to rephrase? Okay, no, no, I think I do understand. Now that I've seen what people are saying, are you saying that instead of starting with a, a, a counting stick of length 10, we start with, we simplify the problem. We simplify the problem. <laughs> okay. Yes. okay. Sorry, I didn't make that clear, probably. Yeah. Yes. So I'm thinking, even though you're articulating very clearly, Charlie, having a length of 100, if you like, if that's our analogy, um, is quite unwieldy. There's a lot to keep track of. So I'm wondering whether we simplify and see whether that can help us. Okay. Um, so can I just say something, just um, perhaps because other people might be wondering. So yes. I came up with three different solutions and I've got three different ways of interpreting yes. your question. Yes, sorry. So I got a solution of 10, a solution of 19, yes. a solution of, 20, of 55. Yeah. But I also saw 27 appear quite often. Mm. And I think perhaps a 24. And at some stage, I'd love to understand how people got those solutions because obviously they're counting it differently. And I think, I, I can imagine that in your classroom, you would want, you, 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 there, there wouldn't be a, a right or a wrong response to your question because you were fairly vague. And I think purpose, vague, not in that, um, yeah. I, I'm not being critical. <laughs> I think you were leaving it as open as possible. And I'm really curious about what other ways are there of counting that I haven't thought about. Um, yeah. I'm always curious about when people do things differently to me. Absolutely. So, um, so I'm just putting putting this out so that uh, there may be other people who are also curious about the 27 and, and so on. Thank you, Charlie. That, that's absolutely, that's really important that um, we try and unpick how other people arrived at their solution because you're right it was very vague um and um and you yourself have found three different ways of doing it and clearly there are other other ways of tackling the problem as well um Kam kambala i don't know if i'm pronouncing your name properly apologies if i'm not suggests she got 27 as she didn't consider the overlap of the second and the third Okay, I'm gonna go and do some scribbling. I think I think we would need to do some strip, scribbling, wouldn't we? I mean, the fantastic thing about, uh, so on our platform here on Zoom, it's, it's obviously it's hard, you know, in a classroom, we would immediately be inviting a child to come, scribble, uh, annotate a drawing so that we could all try and unpick and understand their method. Um, I appreciate that is so much harder to do via Zoom. And so we're having to do a little bit of presuming and we're also having to do a little bit of, I'm afraid, you know, we can't unpick that all now. But thank you, Kambala, for, for explaining how you got your 27. Yeah, um, I get 27 as well, counting it like that. Great. That's, 
Okay, so yes, Kambala, I agree that it is 27. Um, okay. Um, so we've got a number of other people who are contributing and suggesting, um, I have, I've got questions or, 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 or are suggesting how they got their answer. Shibangi, again, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Can you please explain the breakup of 19? Charlie, 19, was that one of the solutions you got? Yes. Okay, and so 19 was this idea. Can you remind us of how you got to 19? Okay, so I was treating, um, I can have length 10 centimeters and it can either be blue or yellow. I can have 20 centimeters and it can be blue, yellow or yellow, blue. Right. And so for the 30 centimeters, again, I can start with blue, I can start with yellow, with 40 centimeters. There are always two possibilities, but yeah. for the length 10, I only have one possibility. Only one. So yeah, so, so if I pop this back, perhaps we can we can do that sort of um so I think what Charlie is saying, if we only look at if we look at a length of 10 centimeters, we could have in this case, um we've got our gray or we've got our white. So there are two different possibilities. If we look at length 20 or length two, depending on how you want to look at it, we can have one which is gray white or we could have one which is white gray but there aren't any other alternatives so so far we've got two possibilities for length 10 we've got two possibilities for length 20 similarly for 30 it will either contain two grays or it will contain two whites so we're going to have two options for each length apart from the whole stick, the 100 centimeters if you like, because that's, we've only got the option which starts with gray. Um, because if we started with white, we'd need an extra gray on the end. Can I just respond to a couple of queries in the chat, Liz? Please do. So Shubangi has said blue yellow is the same as yellow blue, isn't it? And well, it, in my first way of my first response to Liz's question was, well, there are 10 different possibilities and I was treating blue yellow the same. And so my first response to Liz's question was, yes, I've either got length 10, length 20, length 30, length 100. But if I do want to count blue yellow as being different, then I think there are 19 possibilities. And I also want to respond to Michael, who yes. got 54 yep. uh, when he was doing all counting all the overlaps and so on. Um, I get 55 because I'm adding 10 plus nine plus eight plus seven all the way up to one uh, long one. So I don't know what exactly has gone wrong. And my quick way of adding them is that I think if I'm adding all the numbers from 10 to one, and I, I'm gonna pair off the one and the 10 and the two and the nine and the three and the eight and the four and the seven and the five and the six, and I end up with five pairs of 11, and that gave me 55. So um, that was a little sort of quick and easy, sort of a lazy way of adding the 10 numbers. So I'm reasonably confident that it is 55 and not 54. Um, so uh, I, yes, I, either Michael, you've forgotten to add the, the last one. Could be the last one, or yeah. The, or the, a little slip up in the arithmetic. Um, what you described there, Charlie, is, um, yes, he forgot that. Um, what you described there, Charlie, is actually that uh, that method that you used was used allegedly by Gauss, wasn't it, when he was a boy? And in fact, we have included a link to a very short article on Rich in the teacher's notes in this problem. We've included a link to a little article about that as a quick way of adding um, uh, uh, consecutive numbers. Um, Every, all the questions that you're asking and all the clarification points you're seeking are really important. And exactly as Charlie has said, the, the setup of this question was deliberately very open. Um, the, way that, um, the way that the rest of the question goes is that we end up exploring in more detail the, um, the, the assumptions, if you like, that Michael has made and that Charlie was just describing, um, where we're talking about, we, we are looking at all the possible rectangles of different sizes 
where color is irrelevant. Um, and so we, we're looking at the much higher numbers. However, we only get there after the discussion and the, um, you know, the, the, the pulling apart everybody's ideas and clarifying for everybody. Um, so if you wanted to explore a little bit more on the website, please do. I realize that I'm not sharing. Let me, let me go back to sharing the website and then you can have a look. Uh, rather than me pointing aimlessly at my screen, I can actually do something a little bit more useful. Uh, well, while Liz is doing that, perhaps it's worth <coughs> mentioning that there is this mm. famous problem about how many squares there are on a chessboard. Yes. Which is often interpreted that about with the overlapping squares. So there are obviously 64 little squares, but um, there are also um, 49 two by two squares sort of, and if you can imagine sort of <clears throat> being able to take a two by two square and you can move it, if you start the top left, you can move it seven places to the right and then seven places down and so you get all the square numbers so if you take a three by three square then there are 36 ways which is six by six and um if you take the seven by seven which is almost the whole chess board there are four ways of organizing it so there may be some students in your class um you know especially you know year five or six students who who, who might be intrigued by this problem yeah um and so well, what I like about what you've been showing us, Liz, <clears throat> is that we started with something that feels incredibly accessible for very young students, but it offers a possibility of quite sophisticated thinking, and all of us can be counting in different ways, yeah. and as long as we can justify what we're doing, and we can stick to the sort of criteria that we've chosen, <clears throat> then there's plenty of mathematics that can come out of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Charlie. Let's um, go back. Now that that task is also a live problem. So if you do work on, on it with your students, again, you've got the opportunity to send their solutions to us. Um, we're just gonna have time to touch on a third task, which we're going to, the task we're going to look at briefly is called school fair necklaces. The other three that I haven't looked at, um, do have a look at those in your own time. Diagonally square is about a conjecture that the diagonals of a square always meet at right angles uh, and um, encouraging learners at, at upper key stage two to think about whether that is always true. If so, why? Um, brush loads is about exploring uh, different arrangements of seven cubes on a, placed on a table and thinking about how much paint is needed to cover the surfaces that you can see and the challenge is about creating the maximum possible number of brush loads of paint. In other words, the maximum surface area or the minimum surface area and numbers in between. And triangle in the square is a chance for children to um, interrogate a logical argument um, and to begin to try and understand when an argument is following logically and when it might not be. Um, and to have the, the courage to, to sort of um, to question when it's not and improve it. So let's have a quick look, Charlie, at school fair necklaces. Um, here we have um, uh, two children making necklaces to sell at a fair. They're going to have eight beads to start with, and they're going to have four of one colour and four of another. In the problem, you can see they're four red and four yellow. Our constraint is that the necklaces have to be symmetrical. So there's a picture there to give you an example. Um, I wonder whether you could have a think about um, a different necklace you could make with four red and four yellow beads that is symmetrical. Perhaps you'd like to contribute um, some examples to the chat. I will, again, I'll leave it up to you about how you communicate that. You might want to use R&B or for red and blue. Well, not, nothing to do with music. Um, but um, can you find some other examples of symmetrical necklaces made with four red and four yellow beads? I'll leave, give you just a minute to think about that. <clears throat> Thank you. 
please do feel free to post one example. I, I um, I'm not worried about you posting more than one, but obviously, if you'd like to, do. But thank you, Katie, for getting us started. Thanks, Nikki. Thank you. So we've got three, three suggestions so far. Charlie in the classroom, I can imagine what we might be doing is collating on the board um, and, and making a note of the solutions as they come in. But the way we do that, I think is quite key. Um, I guess, it, 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 you, you may well have read the text already on the screen, those of you participating, but you know, eventually we're gonna be asking the question, well, how many ways are there all together and how do we know? So if we're wanting to find all, yeah, the, yeah, this week. all the possible ways and we want to be certain that we haven't missed any out, then I guess we're, we're going to need in what we would call, we'd need to work in a systematic way. We'd need to be finding um, a, a, an order to, to come up with our solutions so that we know there aren't any gaps and we know that we haven't counted any twice. Um, so I guess on the board, we might be collating these. Charlie, if, if um, may I put you in the position of the, um, of the primary teacher? Um, we've got several solutions that have come in. How might you make a note of these, Charlie, on the board? Is there, any, is there anything you, you might do or how could we? Yes, I'm, it, it's not uh, a criticism of children that they approach this in quite a random way. Absolutely not. Mm. Um, but I think it is interesting for them to see that the results can then be organized in an ordered form that then helps them to figure out whether they've got all the possible solutions or not. Right. So, so, one, so I've scribbled down what I think are all the possibilities. Okay. And one of the things that I did was ignored the four beads that are going to be on the right hand side of the middle, because... How do you know you're going to get a symmetrical necklace then though, Charlie? Okay, so I, I'm going to decide what happens on the left-hand side. Right. And I know it's going to have to have two yellow and two reds. Okay, that's as important. As soon as I know that I'm going to use two yellow and two reds on the left, I know that I'm going to be able to mirror, find a mirror image of that on the right. And so I don't need to really worry about the right. I know I'm going to be able to, if I've kept two yellows and two reds on the, to one side, I know that all I need to worry about is what I do on the left-hand side. So that's one way of simplifying the problem. And, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but those people who find maths sort of more intuitively, you know, easy, end up finding methods for doing things that make it even easier for them. They, they sort of have to, it, it's less of an effort for them. Whereas for, for some students, who don't find maths so easy, they end up doing things in a really difficult way. Um, but anyway, so so then what do I, what am I, so then I sort of thought, okay, well, I've only got four things, yep. four beads to worry about. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, let me see what happens if I start with a red one, like you have in your image. Yeah. Well, if I've got one red one on the far left, then the other red, can go in the second position or the third position or the fourth position. So I've got three possibilities. And if I don't start with the red on the left, I must start with the yellow on the red. And if it's yellow, sorry, it's yellow on the left. Yeah. If I start with yellow on the left, the other yellow has to go in the second or third or fourth place. And that gives me the six possible combinations. And I'm convinced that there can't be any others because I must either start with red and if I start with red, the other red has three possibilities, or I start with the yellow, and the other yellow has three possibilities. So all together, I've got. So at some stage, I would want to organize students 
results in that kind of way so that they could see or yeah. you know use multi-link to color them yeah um, i've seen some people you know so you could have your your you know red red yellow yeah. yellow red yellow red yellow red yellow yellow red or so and and you would see it's really nice because you see the red the second red cube moving along that's right or if you start with yellow you see the other yellow moving along yeah. Sorry, that was a very long-winded, no. um, but I think, um, yes, Kambala is doing okay. something similar here. Thank you, Kambala, yes. So I think, um, and, and I think if we're gathering, if we're gathering children's solutions onto the board, then that is absolutely, Charlie, one way we might order them to draw their attention to, an, to a structure, to a system. Um, of course, there are other ways to do it too. That's just the one that, that, that struck Charlie, but... Um, you and I, uh, Liz, have worked with a colleague, Fran, who taught me, or suggest, yeah, who taught me that one really good way of doing this is that when the students bring suggest solutions, yeah. she's written them on bits of paper Individual with blue and tack, paper. Yeah. and she's stuck them on, and That's so right. they're all randomly organised yeah. on the board, yeah. and then That's right. she's moved them around and organised them into. A sort of a system. system and then the structure and and then if there's one missing it becomes very obvious that one's missing absolutely absolutely yeah that's a really powerful way to do it now i'm aware of the time charlie we're, we're uh, overrunning already so um i would urge you to have a think about the other numbers of beads that we've had a, ha, uh, suggested in the question with there are some surprising results that's all i'm going to say um do have a go at that with your with your children if appropriate um and we hope you enjoy it now i hope what you've um one of the things you're taking away from this session is this idea that um it, it's a way of working that we that we're talking about the gathering examples um, sort of having that initial playing phase, looking for patterns, offering a conjecture, and then beginning to reason towards a, a proof, whether that is through words, as we're advocating here, or whether it is algebraic, as children get um, more familiar with the algebra where appropriate. Um, so that kind of that, that um, uh, progression isn't the right word that kind of narrative through the mathematics is is I think what the tasks we've done today have got in common I'm going to stop sharing my um web browser and instead I'm just going to bring up the powerpoints once again um just to take you through some last sort of add mini bits before we say goodbye and I'm just getting there I'm aware that I'm not doing this very quickly but I will get there there we go. Good. Charlie, can you see the PowerPoint? I can. Great. Okay. So um, if you don't already follow us on Twitter and you use Twitter, please do. And if you'd like to converse about today's event, you could use that particular hashtag, should you wish. Alternatively, you may like to keep um, abreast of what we do via our email newsletter. And um, you can sign up there if you haven't done so already. Um, if you don't already know about it, one of the um, one of the best best it's not quite the right word most useful pages to go uh, if you're a primary practitioner is our curriculum page. That's kind of the portal through which you will get to all things linked with the maths curriculum um, on the Enrich site. Um, it may be useful for helping to integrate Enrich tasks into your everyday teaching. What we've done today is. Have a look at the tasks in just one of the features in our current feature but if you'd like to look at the others then that's the link that you would need to go to incidentally these links are all available from the primary teacher homepage that we were on right at the beginning of this afternoon session the recording of this event will go up on that page um, and you will get an email link to that as well um, likely it won't be until the very beginning of next week do feel free to share it with colleagues um, or, or re-watch should you wish to um, we would love your feedback, please. As I said, Trinity College here in Cambridge have made it possible um, for you to attend this free of charge due to their generous funding. And it's really important that we're able to do as, as good a job we can. So please do let us know how we might improve these sessions. Finally, if you've enjoyed this afternoon so much, you can't wait to join us again. Here is the link 
to our next event, which is on Wednesday, the, I've written down the address somewhere, Wednesday, the 27th of April. There we go, seamless. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for participating in the chat. And we hope that um, you will join us again on a future occasion. Um, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are. Thank you.